Hi, Dr. Mori, Uncivilized Vitality, and uh, this will be a shortish video, I hope. I'll try to keep it under 15, 20 minutes, about your, uh, your bags and bowls, your containers that you eat with. So we did another video on um, different stoves and ways you can bring uh, cooking, cooking ability into non-fire uh, permissible areas. So you need a stove, we talked about that. Uh, Maybe I can put the link in the, the description so you can find that one. But anyway, moving on. So now you have your, your cooking and your fire kit out there. You want something you can eat out of um, or drink out of. And the main idea you're going to build your container kit around is your water bottle. You have to have a way to purify water, get potable water outside. That means putting it in the fire and purifying it. You can have a filter, obviously, bringing that. Or chemical means purify wire is great as backup water, are great as backups. but. Being able to put something in the fire to boil water should be what you build your container kit around. And that means you're going to not want to use classic uh, plastic Nalgene bottle. You want to want to be able, this is great for carrying water with a filter, but if you want to boil water, this is not the way to go. You can also use, sometimes you get these cheap water bottles, these really thin walled uh, bottles as swag from different events. And these are great, but sometimes they have a liner inside there and you're gonna wanna not boil that in the water, so you'd have to make sure that's not something you're gonna use. You could also take uh, a really neat, this is from Clean Canteen, this is a double-walled um, vacuum thermos. And this is great to keep things warm or clean or cold uh, from home. It even comes with a secondary container, also double-walled, can't go in the fire, big no-no. And it's super heavy, so a thermos is not gonna work. You're going to want to go with a single walled stainless steel canteen, something that um, is designed to go in the fire as mine clearly has done so over the years. This is the 40 ounce clean canteen single walled can, uh, container and it's got a folding bale on the handle that's an aftermarket lid I got um, recently as I, I broke the lid uh, on my other one. This is the Clean Canteen 64 ounce that comes with the classic Clean Canteen lid that's got this little hook for your, your carabiner or tie a string or something on to use as a bale. Uh, clean Canteen's great. I like to take uh, both of these with me. This is my secondary container for as I, if I have to, if I boil water and purify it, I can store it in the larger one and that way I can fill up for the, the day and just in one stop instead of boiling, cooling, drinking repeat three or four times a day. Usually though I'll replace this with a, a uh, platypus or um, a Sea to Summit uh, water bladder. So something that'll go that'll hold two or three liters of water uh, but it, it folds down small so I can start out carrying a lot of water and then refill as necessary. Uh, just carrying a bladder is my secondary water container. But this is what my kit is built around. So besides just being able to carry water fill my bladder back up with uh, boiled water. The single walled canteen can be used to drink your tea out of at night. You can't really eat out of it, uh, although I have, uh, and that just makes a mess because they're hard to clean. Generally, I like nowadays to stick with just water in my canteen. So in addition to the canteen, there's a few other things you can do. You want to have something maybe uh, as a secondary stainless steel that could go in the fire. So I'd recommend um, a cup. There's a couple other things. Once again, you get this GSI with the nice little koozie and little sippy lid, uh, but plastic, can't go in the fire. Be nice to boil the tea or boil the water here, make my tea and have it, but it's a single use item because it can't go in the fire. So I don't recommend them, although they are super light and in a pinch, uh, it's, it's not the, the worst thing to have. Better would be to get you, your, get you, get yourself a stainless steel cup with some folding handles on that so that you can also put this in the fire to boil water and then maybe purify that a cup at a time and fill the water bottle up or just have that to drink out of or use it as, a, as an eating container. And the cool thing is most of these will nest with your canteen so you've got, uh, you're saving some space. Right? Uh, drawback to this one is I wouldn't be able to use this as a pot over the fire because it just has these handles uh, and I can't suspend this in any way. So maybe I'd want something that could be suspended over the fire as a container. So you can try a little bit of a larger cup. This one is from Self-Reliance Outfitters and it has the folding handles, but it has these two little holes uh, pre-drilled in the side. Actually, I may have drilled those myself, but 
Either way, either it comes with holes, you can drill holes. And into that, you can put a piece of coat hanger. You fashion a bale yourself. You could use a um, fish mouth spreader. You could put that in there. Either way, you have a secondary container that you can boil water in, put into your canteen, or um, vice versa. And I can eat out of this too, uh, like a soup bowl. And it nests in my, uh, my canteen nester. So now I have a kit that set up two, two fire ready containers, something to eat out of or eat um, on. And it has uh, the capability to be suspended over the fire so I could actually cook in it. And it has a lid somewhere. Yeah, there we go. So it has a lid I can lock down and maybe use as a makeshift oven. Or if I were to hold that, I could even uh, make some char cloth in that. The canteen fitting into the cup allows me to make a little, by upside down on the container, make a little stainless steel vault in which I could produce char cloth. Maybe we'll do a video on that. Um, but either way, great system here. Nesting cup, clean canteen. But let's say I want uh, something else to eat off of. Maybe I'm gonna eat steak. It's hard to cut steak and eat that out of, out of your cup. So you need some sort of plate. I could use the lid to my cup, but it's awful small. I'm gonna set that aside. So you're gonna wanna eat off of something. Uh, you could go super cheap and just bring a, plate, a paper bowl, just wad it up, throw it down inside your bag. Won't last long, but it is very light. You could get a stainless steel plate slash bowl. Uh, and, and I used to really like these because I could, I could put that in the fire and cook on it. Uh, I could use it as a bowl or a drinking vessel. It's good for stew. It's wide enough open to cut. But other than that, uh, I didn't use a plate a lot because I planned my food out so I don't necessarily need a plate, which also precludes the full uh, mess kit. This is an old Boy Scout or GI kit. It's kind of neat. It's got a fry pan with a long handle and a partitioned um, tray, right? Just like, just like uh, when you're in prison, you get a spot for your jello and a spot for your pork chops. And it nests up, but man, is it big and take up a lot of room. So if you have a mess kit, that's great. Not typically what I run, but I do have a plate, a cup, and a canteen. Now I need something to eat with, right? So utensils, you can go uh, from the super simple, which is just a pair of chopsticks I take with me from the the sushi bar, I grab a fistful, and then I just throw them in the fire afterwards. Um, instead of carrying them, sometimes I just pick twigs up and whittle the ends clean, and I have a pair of chopsticks in the woods. But sometimes it's nice to have those. If you're eating soup or you want to stir your tea, it's nice to have a spoon with some little tines on it, so a spork. And this one's nice and long, so I can reach down inside the, the bag meals or get to the bottom of my pot and stir things up. It's titanium. However, sometimes it's a little hard to fill space because it's long. So lately I've switched over to a double-ended spork. Just like, uh, reminds me, what's that thing Matt likes? Cat dog. Got the spoon on the one end, the cat dog cartoon. Uh, fork, spoon, spork. Got the spork on this end so you can eat your steak and your meat. It's got the spoon on this end. It's not very um, easy to get all the way down into those bag meals if you eat those or to stir in a hot pot over the fire but I'm trying it out. I liked it so far, and, except maybe the bowl's a little shallow for me. So, but it does fit down a little easier into my kit, and I'll show you that in a minute. You could go uh, whole hog or full Windsor. This is the titanium. This is a set that has a spatula with a serrated edge, and on the back, it's got a long titanium spork with a nice, decent bowl. The tines are terrible, but one of the cool things about this is it can hook together and give you a pair of uh, tongs, which are nice around the fire. But I don't find that I plan food that requires the use of tongs all that often. So a um, little gimmicky, but pretty cool. And if you, if you really want to take it easy out in the woods and want all your utensils, you look into something like that. But I'm always looking to uh, streamline and downsize. Now, besides having those, if I'm out with two or three people, Let's say there's nine of us. Instead of having every morning nine water bottles and nine cups balanced in around the coal base, um, which we end up getting in each other's way, it'd be good to consolidate. So what we like to do is every, every three people, group of three people, should have a bush pot, at least one among them. You don't each need a bush pot, but if you're going to be in a group, bring a bush pot. 
It's, if it's just the wife and I, or maybe three of us, I'll bring a small bush pot, like this little titanium, uh, how much is that? About 32 ounces. A little more than, about a liter and a half. So about 40 ounces. So I could boil enough water in this to fill this canteen once, or a couple cups of tea. So this is great for the wife and I. It's titanium, it's small, it saves on space. Not quite enough for three people. So maybe a 64 ounce or a standard uh, bush pot size. This one is from Self Reliance Outfitters. It's their single walled stainless steel uh, food grade and all that. It's got some bat wing handles, nice big uh, handles for your gloves to fit in in the winter. It's got a little dedicated crimp for a spout. It's got a lid that stays in there pretty good and uh, a nice wide open bale. So I really like this uh, bush pot. I've used this one obviously for years, but it's nice to have a bush pot. And then I I have gotten in the habit of when I go by myself, I will take a bush pot, uh, typically as part of my kit anyway, because I use the lid uh, to eat off of instead of a plate. So now I'm down to uh, a bush pot, a nesting cup, my fork spoon, and my, my canteen. And then I'll show you what I do next is I have moved up to... Um, the Solo Stove, Solo Stove 1800 uh, Bush Pot this season, 2024. I'm going to try that out. And the main reason I made the switch is uh, the lid, as opposed to the lid on my Self Reliance Bush Pot, which is kind of smooth and makes for a, a pretty slippery plate. Sometimes I flip it over and I use the, uh, the small lip on this as a, as a plate to kind of contain the juices and things or if I'm uh, looking for a clean surface to cut and work on. Obviously, if I were in a group of three, that's only one plate uh, for the, the three of us off the bush pot, but the other two could bring uh, their own uh, plates or bowls to eat out of or just eat off of their bowls. So that's why I'm making the switch this season. I wanna try it out, see how it goes with this new lid. The other thing I like about the Solo Stove is where the bale attaches to the uh, bush pot on the Self-Reliance Outfitters, it kind of sticks out a little bit. And the Solo Stove is a little more streamlined, so it fits down into my, uh, obviously these get really dirty, and it fits, it fits down into the bag I use to keep the inside of my bag, my backpack clean, so all this soot and whatnot doesn't uh, rub off and get my, uh, the rest of my equipment dirty as we go. So having those bales in there, even though the bale clearance is a little smaller, having those bales tucked in and these larger handles that can fold out, that was kind of in, of interest to me as well. So I'm gonna put that bush pot down in the, the clean bag. And then I tuck those, I tuck that down so this keeps my bag clean on the inside. And into that, I will put the extra accessories I bring to eat with. I always have a dedicated pot holder, usually a brightly colored piece of cotton bandana so I can pick up uh, my hot water bottle out of the fire. I can hold my cup um, if it's too hot to drink right away because these are just single walled stainless steel and the heat transfers quickly. I can set that lid right down there and now I've got a, a little plate I can hold on to the, the lid, the ring on the top. I can grab that. Now I've got a little bowl that won't slip or fall and I'm protecting my hand from the heat. So I always have, I also use this to clean up with afterwards, wipe things out, and it's cotton, then I just rinse it in the, rinse it in the river or the water and hang it out to dry. So I always have my pot holder in there. My salt from my salt needle kit stays with my cook kit. I always bring a little bit of floss, it's nice to have that when you're done eating. And then uh, tin foil, just three feet of heavy duty tin foil folded up. I, I used to use this as my plate before I hit on the idea of using the lids, I can also bake or cook things with it, and I can make an improvised bowl or water vessel with tin foil, and it weighs nothing. Just throw that in the bottom of your kit. Okay. And um, I used to make these little heat reflective uh, koozies for the bottom of my cup when I was holding the, the cup uh, or eating out of it. But since I switched to just using the pot holder uh, with the lid, I don't even carry those anymore. Always looking to downsize. So I got a lot of room in there. I throw my fire kit in here. I have a, a ferro rod, lighter, and a tinder kit, and I just keep that 
uh, that is my fire kit, but I usually keep it with my cook kit because I always have a ferro rod or a couple ways to start fire on my body and then I keep the secondary ones with the cook kit. And then I have plenty of room in here to stuff a, a steak uh, wrapped up in a Ziploc bag, There's a couple things of tea or some uh, little packages of hot chocolate, maybe some oats or um, whatever else I want to make, some, some gruel or some cereal. It all goes down inside my bush pot. My eating utensil fits in there, which I like the small one I'm trying out. I can even take the lid from my cup. If I want to bring the lid, which I don't always, I could throw that in there. Stuff a little bit of food down there, put the lid on. And this goes down to my backpack and that's my cooking kit or my um, eating kit. And I've got some food with it. My nesting cup and canteen goes right in the water bottle pocket on my backpack and now I'm all set. And this would be a, a uh, glorious full eating kit uh, and water purification system for me on any outing. Fire being super, super uh, streamlined, I would just bring these two items and maybe the lid and then just whittle some chopsticks or a spoon or just a flat stick to shovel food in with. And then I would have a little sack with my food. So this is my absolute minimum when I'm being um, extravagant, I'll bring the bush pot with all the extras. So uh, that's a good, uh, good example of some different items you can use for a cook kit and some different accessories. Uh, leave some comments below how you're building out your, your eating kit, your, your bowls and bags, your containers, and uh, like and subscribe and turn on notifications and share the video and sign up for one of our events in 2024. We're moving into the best season of the year, which is winter for camping in the great uh, north of Michigan. And let's see, we have a cabin camp this weekend, or last weekend, I guess, depending on this video airs. And then we have the Women's Winter Wonderland coming up with just natural shelters in February. And then, of course, we've got Small Game Hunt, the Winter Hike, uh, the Fieldcraft 101 in the spring as usual. And we'll talk about, in person, more options for streamlining your cook kits and eating kits for the bare minimum. Just your water bottle, maybe a cup, up to the full bush kit, uh, bush pot kit. And uh, we'll go from there. So that's it.